Today, we're talking about employment law issues as some workplaces return to the office and others expand work from home policies. What types of issues are employers and employees running into as we navigate the new normal of work from home versus return to in-person work? Employment law is something that touches all of us who work, and it's important to understand your rights as employers and employees. Today, for this practical and timely conversation, we're joined by two employment lawyers, Mackenzie Irwin and Andrew Shaw. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Now, Mackenzie, let's start with you. Can you give us a sense of how many employers are currently moving back to the office full-time or even part-time? Is it most employers or or, or where, are, where are we right now in 2023? Yeah, it's, it's really a mix, actually. I'm finding that my impression is really that it's, some employers are, are recalling them back to the office, whether it's full-time or on a hybrid model a couple days a week. And there are those employers that are still really appreciating that the work from home model, it's really worked for their employees over the past three years and employee morale is up. So they're really sticking to that and allowing them to continue to work from home. So it really depends on the industry and the team dynamics in each individual team environment. Andrew, is there anything you want to add there on current trends of uh, return to work in person versus expanding? Uh, work from home policies? I would just emphasize that it does depend on the industry. Uh, as we know, you know, some jobs you just cannot work from home, but those individuals oftentimes, healthcare and such, uh, were always at the office or at the workplace during a pandemic. For those that have that were working from home during the pandemic, uh, I would agree that there's been a, definitely been a shift to a hybrid model where most employers are requiring anywhere from one to three days in the office. Um, so it, 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 I would say that being in the office five days per week for folks that were normally at home during the pandemic is, is, is pretty uncommon at this point. So Andrew, what about these employers who are requiring the return? Can How does it work with requiring it? What types of you know heads up to employees is required? Is there a heads up that's that's required? Uh, what can you tell us about making that a required part of a job that had been for two years done remotely? Sure. I think a reasonable period of notice in terms of return to work is definitely required. But can an employer require an employee who previously worked at the office to return? Yes. Um, you know, there are certain uh, things that it, it impact that, like language in an employment agreement or what your workplace policies were, past practice was in the past. Uh, there's also things like human human rights laws. There may be disability issues that might have to be accommodated. Uh, there may be occupational health and safety issues uh, that have to be accommodated as well. Although, you know, saying that you think the workplace is unsafe due to COVID-19 probably would not fly at this point. Uh, but as a general proposition, an employer can ask employees to return to work. Mackenzie, what do you have to add to that? Anything you want to say about the the mandate to return? Yeah, I think I think I agree with my friend. It's really important what's in the contract. So employees don't have an automatic right to work from home, but if you've been hired on a remote basis, on a permanently remote basis, and it's in your that term is in your contract, then likely that employer can't now change that term and require you to come into work. So it's going to be on an individual basis, and it's really going to uh, depend on. Uh, if there's any kind of accommodation issues as well. So there's a, a lot of factors at play here. Now, we, we've got to go to break, but in the next segment, I want to talk about some cases that we've seen in the employment law context related to work from home issues. There's a, a case that's been receiving a lot of attention involving something called time theft. Um, just in, in the time that we have right now, Andrew, can you just very briefly explain what the concept of time theft is in about 30 seconds before we get into what the case is about? Sure. Time theft is simply a concept where an employee is being paid to perform work and is not performing the work. 